going into our first topic, which is something that I found very, very interesting. Um, while looking through Instagram, I came across an initiative of uh, the British Embassy or some people within the British Embassy called the Women in Uniform Association. Um, now, I saw that this was described as a project to support women in law enforcement and the military in institutions in Albania. Um, but can you tell me a bit more about this? Absolutely. So we have a very wide programme now between uh, our uh, two governments um, and that spans from uh, issues uh, around uh, home affairs and justice uh, to issues around economic development to education and culture. Uh, but one of the things that's unusual in Albania is we probably have one of the best partnerships operationally. In fact, I describe it as you know, Albania is our best partner operationally. And my embassy has a lot of colleagues from law enforcement, from our police, uh, from our customs, from our prosecution service and others. And one of the things we realise as well, because we've got a very strong defence relationship, our two militaries work very closely together bilaterally, but also in NATO. Albania is a really important partner, particularly on Ukraine at the moment, but also on other issues. And what I realised is actually we've got a lot of different colleagues um, working with uniformed services. And one of my colleagues from uh, Customs said, well, look, why don't we actually see what support we can give to women um, so that as they progress through those services, they're given the support they need. And as we looked into this, we realised that actually there were quite a number of issues, and we faced that in the United Kingdom, but where both some of our colleagues could share their experiences, but also we listened to what women um, were saying in the uniformed services, and that's why we've now created this new association, the Women in Uniform Association. And what were their issues? What were the problems that they encountered? So um, some of these issues were visible ones. I mean, so things like, for example, for some of the services, uniforms weren't designed bespoke uh, for women. Um, in fact, in one of the services, um, women were expected to wear high heels, even on operations. That obviously wasn't enabling them to do the jobs in the way that they wanted. So there's been, you know, even pra small practical things like changing those sorts of things. Now, that's actually going to require a change in regulations as well, um, but will then enable more women to do operational roles in the way they want. One of the issues was actually um, physical um, uh, self-defence training, mm -hmm. uh, because actually women were being told, oh, well, you know, you aren't able to do certain of the more um, physical jobs. And now actually we've trained, um, uh, I think it was 84 individual women from all the different uniform services uh, to be able to have that self-defence training. And in fact, we even now have a request for men for more self-defence training. Uh, so we can get a really women good... teaching them. Exactly. <laughs> and, well, and that's exactly it, because actually the whole point of that was to be trainers, uh, training for trainers so that can be spread throughout mm -hmm. uh, the services. One of the other things I've been really pleased about um, was to get the top level support from all the services. So whether men or women, the top leadership of all these services agree uh, that we need to uh, do more because obviously in any of our systems, um, barriers for any individual group we need to look at those and um, address them. One of the other things was the sort of support that, that can be given in health, um, in uh, different ways that we can support uh, the sort of products and discounts that we can get from, from others that help women mm -hmm. to progress uh, more effectively, but also to give profile. And we just had a wonderful moment, um, a conference, where we brought together not just um, women um, in uniform services here in Albania, but also from across the region, the Western Balkans region. Um, and actually, this initiative is now going to, we think, flourish across the region but really led by uh, the experience in Albania. This is interesting so it started in Albania and it could potentially go across the whole region. This That's is... right and actually one of the things I'm really pleased about this is at a time when the British government is really championing internationally how we support women and girls across mm -hmm. the world. Um, and so that's one of the things that I'm now encouraging all of my teams to think about for the next year, is how we can really embed that across all our programmes. People talk about mainstreaming uh, gender issues, but also having bespoke programmes like this where that's needed. But what about encouraging women to join the armed forces? You know, these are, I imagine, very fulfilling, very interesting, very exciting. I don't think I'm physically sort of cut out for this kind of thing, but, you know, I, I imagine it's a very rewarding job, but I also, having been in Albania for six years, can imagine, particularly outside of Tirana, that if a woman said, you know, I'm going to join the army, um, people in her family may not look so kindly on that. Is there an element of sort of help empowering women to actually take that step and join these, these industries? 
So it's a good suggestion because obviously uh, people feeling that actually they can uh, apply and be considered equally as part of uh, this, but also then having the recruitment focus as well. Um, it's a good suggestion. Um, we'll need to take that forward with uh, colleagues to really consider it. I think um, uh, it's one of the areas that's not easy to do because you yeah. want to be open and equal mm -hmm. as well as then promoting the opportunities. But one of the things we will be able to do, uh, we've been discussing with the Ministry of Defence and the Armed Forces, for example, how to do more recruitment drives mm -hmm. in the north as part of our support for economic development uh, in the north. So that's one of the areas where we could also uh, look at this. But I think even having this um, initiative and you have an Instagram account, you post about it in both languages, I think this serves as an advert in a way, you know, for women to go, oh, this is, in oh, look at this, what the this initiative they have, maybe that is part of it. And, and part of it, well. and then also it's promoting the role models. Yes. And one of the things I'm delighted to see is how um, women have been talking about how they have succeeded, whether that's in the military, whether that's in the police uh, or elsewhere. So that's something we'll continue to do.